sisters, I just want to speak to you tonight. And I want to speak from the Law and the Prophets, the first five books of the Bible. That's the same thing that Muhammad used for Islam. And that, that's where he came up with the Quran from, was the first five books. So this applies to both Christian and Islamic ladies in some areas. You sisters out there, have you ever thought about the beauty, the value, the blessing of being valued at half price? Now I know that goes against uh, our pride, but look at the the value, the, oh, the beauty. There's actually freedom in that. There's a blessing in freedom in being valued at half price. Because a lot of times we don't think about these things. You know, in uh, the book of Numbers, and that it spake of the value of a lady, and, and you know, elsewhere it's also written about the, the law of vows. And that, and when we get down to it, when a woman bore a man child, she was unclean for a week. Yet when she bore a made child, she was unclean for two weeks. And the women were valued at half value. And under the law of vows, we could see that a father and a husband, he could disallow a woman's vow. When she lived with her father, he could disallow her vow. Once she was married, her husband could. Now a lot of people see that as male chauvinism. They see that as sexist. They see that as demeaning. But now let's look at it in accordance with the mercy of that. How often do we fail to see the mercy? How often do we fail to see the glory? Think about the certain amount of freedom in that. Now when you look at that, okay, yes, the women were valued at half the value. Okay? In the Christian faith, that's what's meant by you know, the wife is the weaker vessel. Now in the Christian faith, that's because the church is the bride of Christ. He is greater than she. He's stronger than she. He works outside the church and he supplies by way of the Spirit of God to give the rightly divided word of truth to the church, the bride. Okay? That's where the assemblies like the House of Women or in some cultures, the harem. Even in uh, some churches, they call it the cloister. But even with the uh, Islamic faith, where the women are valued at half, there, some men will abuse that, and it's a shame that they would do so. But there's also freedom in that. And when you think about this now, and you look at the freedom of being valued at half, okay? Let's take some things into consideration. Let's say that because of the headship in the Christian faith, you have the Lord, he's the head of man. Man is the head of woman, he's the head of his wife and is to rule his house. Now, the wife, she's supposed to be in subjection unto her husband and train her daughter to be wives and mothers. Now, that, that appears demeaning, but actually there's a freedom there. Just like in Islam, you know, the father or the husband, he answers to Allah. And, you know, if a woman wants to do something, she must have her father or her husband's approval. It appears demeaning, but let's look at the freedom of it, the blessing, okay? <coughs> As we look at these things, okay? Now, in the Islamic faith, if a woman wants to do something, it may, she may want to do something that goes against the Word of God. 
And for that, I'll just go back to the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, you know, the words that even Muhammad had said, you know, that they used. Let's say that she wants to do something that goes against that. Let's say she wants to, oh, be out of the house and be equal to a man. Now, as long as she is veiled and living with him, the veil signifies the subjection to her father or husband. As long as she is, you know, living in her father's house or with her husband, she wants to do something that goes against the will of God. As long as she's veiled. Now, here's the freedom of the veil. As long as she's veiled, her father or her husband must answer for that. That means if she wants to do something that goes against the word of God, her father or husband, he's going to have to answer to God for that. Now, if the veil's removed and she has equality, he does not anymore. Now she's got to answer for her own sins. So see, when we get down to it, knowing that God is so great, there's a freedom in the veil because when we make a mistake, our father or our husband can either allow it or disallow that, okay? Now, if he disallows it in that day when he hears it, that vow can't stand. Or let's say, you know, that you go, I want to go to town, I want to do this or that, and he knows it goes against the word of God, and he says, no. He has actually spared you. He's actually used his authority over you to spare you. Okay? And if you make a mistake and you sin against God, and that, if you're veiled, you're covered, you're under the authority of your husband and father. So that sin is not necessarily laid to your charge. If your father knows about it and finds out, you know, he can make the atonement for you. Now, you don't, you see, this it goes that there's some areas of it where there's more of a freedom than a burden. In the Christian faith, okay, the wife is the weaker vessel. She's under the authority, supposed to be under the authority of her husband. She's a weaker vessel because the church is weaker than Jesus. Jesus is greater, stronger, mightier than his bride, the church. So, when a woman refuses to veil, she's taking the place trying to be as a man. When she tries to be as a man, she answers for her own sins. Like in Isaiah, the third chapter, where it said, you know, he'll remove the veils. That's kind of where it's written that they will judge women, judge thee as women that break wedlock, desire another other than your husband. That's where the church is doing. They're desiring the world rather than Jesus. That's why women want to be equal. But even in the Christian church, okay, when the lady's in subjection to her husband and she's veiled, that veil is a type and shadow of the Spirit of God covering the church, like Isaiah 30, verse 1. So when she's veiled, and in living with her father or husband, and she makes, you know, that mistake or vow or what, whatever, her father or her husband, they can disallow that and say, no, no way. Now, when they do that, if they make a mistake, now the father or husband has to answer for that mistake. See, because she's under their authority. She is, you know, actually that covering, which is a type and shadow of covering the Spirit of God on the church, shows that she's under authority of her father or husband. So, therefore, he can allow a vow or disallow a vow. But, when we actually look at it, when she makes a mistake, if she's 
living in accordance with the Word of God. She's a discreet, chaste, keep her at home, trying to be a wife and mother, train up her daughter right. She's veiled. Her husband has to answer for that because she's under his authority. So there you have that freedom. But if she removes the veil, remember in the uh, Old Testament there, with the test of jealousies, bring the woman in and uncover her head. See, her hair wasn't her veil. If her hair was her veil, they'd have to shave her head. But when they uncovered her head, then they gave her the bitter water. And that, sadly, in today's church, the bitter water is the truth. So when we see this, that's the test of jealousies that's written, we serve a jealous God. So when we see that this is happening, and he judges, you know, the church as a woman who breaks uh, wedlock, it's written, judgment begins in the house of God. So since the church is less than Jesus, she's the weaker vessel. She's valued at half. There's no way that she can be equal to her Lord. So when we see this test of jealousies, the removal of the veil, she answers for her own sins. This is what's going to really, this is what's really going to catch a lot of ladies off guard. Because they're using the rights and freedoms of a free country. They're refusing the veil. They want to be like the world. They want to be equal to their husband. But at the judgment seat, the veil's removed. She'll have to answer for her own sins when that veil is removed. So see, as they go through life now and they don't want a veil, what they're actually doing, their sins are not covered. They're not covered by their husband. It's not covered by their father. And because they're not in subjection to husband or father, they're not covered by the Lord. So their sins are actually waiting for them at the judgment seat, uncovered. Uncovered by husband, uncovered by father, uncovered by the blood of Christ. Waiting at that judgment seat. So you see, it looks bad that women would be esteemed half, you know, or and such, but in actuality, there's a freedom there. There's a grace there. There's a glory there. Because as long as they try to serve the Lord, or in the case of Islamic women, they're trying to serve God, Allah. They're trying their best to do that. They make a mistake as long as they're trying to be the woman that God made them, the female, and they acknowledge that God is greater. And that's why the church, the assembly, and such is valued at half or less. But since it's only valued at half at the most, you know, it's the weaker vessel, both Islamic and Christian ladies. When they make that mistake, as long as they're being the woman God made them, and they're staying in the house, and teaching their daughters to be wives and mothers, and they're doing the best they can for their God, then that sin is not uncovered. So see, there's a great uh, unseen, there's a great unseen and unnoticed freedom and beauty in being created female when living as a female not trying to live as a male there is that great freedom you know and that, it's a shame but you know being human as we are it's hard to see the glory of being in submission it's hard to see the glory of being considered you know half and it's hard to see the glory in having to cover oneself. But when you get down to it, you start going into everything. <clears throat> and you 
start seeing how, you know, that covering is all what's called a type and shadow of the Spirit of God and how it covers. And then when you look into the spiritual aspects of the Law of Vows, and you see that uh, spiritual aspect of removing the veils for judgment, to test the jealousies and such, then all of a sudden, you look at the the law of vows and you see, wait a second, you know, the father can allow or disallow, the husband can allow or disallow, and if he allows something that goes against the law of God, the veil has become that greatest freedom from the wrath of God, because that veil, that submission to the veil, that covering, that has be, just become a freedom because now you're in subjection to father or husband. And since he allowed it, he has to answer for it. So see, sometimes we don't think about these things. And of course, you know, there's downsides to everything. Nobody wants a tyrant for a father or a tyrant for a husband. And some men do abuse their authority. But the thing with it is, what you got to remember is always do your best for God. But, you know, whether you're Muslim or Christian, I, I know some ladies out there. They identify as Islamic, but yet they acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Son of God. They're not trying to convert Islamic people. They're just quietly living what they believe. They're abiding where they're at. And they still identify as Islamic. Yet they believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and they trust in Him. They just do so quietly. They do so secretly. They don't have to try to convert other people. You know, if the Lord wants to, He can open their eyes. And then there's other, you know, Islamic ladies out there. They're doing the best they can. And when you really look at it, you see that, and you, you hear the good stories, but then you hear the horror stories. So, you know, those Christian ladies out there who have chosen to return to the home, to femininity, the dresses, the veil, subjection to a husband. When you choose to do that, you're actually heading in the right direction. And maybe if I continue with videos, maybe I'll show some more things from the laws and prophets about who Jesus is and how great he is. But continue as you're going. Try to please the Lord in being female. Those Islamic ladies out there, if any of you watch this, do the best you can to serve God to the best of your ability. Just do the best you can. I would like to see you become Christians, but even if you don't, do the best you can. You are created female for a purpose. You are created female as a type and shadow of the bride of Christ, even though you may not believe it. And I'm not going to hate you, and I'm not going to speak down upon you. Do the best you can as a female, and don't be led astray with trying to be equal to men, trying to look like men, act like men, speak like men. All that does is anger God. Try to be the best woman you can be. And <clears throat> you men out there, if any Christian men see this, you turn back to the old ways. You rule your house. Guide your family toward Christ. In a godly manner, as listed in Deuteronomy, training up your children when thou risest up and thou walkest by the way. That's admirable. Keep trying. Keep going. Turn out of this wicked world. Don't be like the darkness. 
get away from all the evil deeds, you know, the parties, drugs, and alcohol, and such. Turn from that. That's admirable. If any Islamic men see that, praise God. I hope and pray you'll treat your wives decent. No, you have a shadow of a doubt that they are definitely special in the eyes of God, whom you call Allah, but the Lord knows them, and they are special in their role as female, so I would just hope and pray that you would treat them well. As for the ones who are used as Enoch's, who can be either male or female, oh, they can be very strong, very bold and very courageous when they're being used as male. But they can be very meek, very docile and gentle when used as female. Because it doesn't matter to them if they were used on a battlefield in a war or in a cloister or harem or wherever. It just doesn't matter. Because they have just been made an Enoch for the Lord, and they just, you know, have, if male and female, it really doesn't even matter to them which one they are. It just doesn't matter. They see the beauty in femininity, and they see the blessings of masculinity, and they see how both glorify the Lord. So, if anybody does watch this, if you got any questions, feel free to ask. If I can, I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Maybe down the road I'll, you know, do some videos on who the Lord is from the law and the prophets, the Psalms, the Proverbs, the children of Israel, their history. Maybe, if the Lord wills, I'll go in that and by glorifying Him and who He is. You see, then see, ladies can see the importance of why they were created to be his bride. And how that subjection, that humility, being in the house, dressed like a lady and veiled, all of that, living a chaste life, that is actually a freedom and a blessing especially when your husband or your father has to answer for the sins instead of you. And that it's almost, it's just something they should have been taught all along. But yet so few taught it. Too many turn to pride, to try to turn, make everybody think that here they are, there's a soldier for Christ. And most didn't even understand the word of God to begin with. They even teach it the right way. Yes, it's a blessing to be used of the Lord as a man. It's a blessing to be used of the Lord as a woman. It just doesn't matter. Both are a blessing. Both are equal, but both are not the same. The same, but yet not the same. They're equal, but not the same. Women glorify the Lord in femininity, subjection, being in the house, dressed as females and veiled. Men in masculinity authority, ruling over their house, dressing as men, and acting like men, not like the weak generation that has grown up through all the lies that's been taught. If anybody sees this, like I say, feel free to ask any questions. I'll try to answer them. If I can't answer them, if the Lord does not give me an answer, I will not waste your time or mine or try to be arrogant. I'll just tell you I don't know right now. I'll pray about it and see what the Lord gives me. And then, anyway, for those who watch it, I hope and pray you get something out of it. And remember, ladies, being half the value being in the house, being in subjection, being veiled, is a great blessing and a great freedom given by God. And being that weaker vessel, that is a blessing. Because even as Jesus said, unto whom much is given, much is required. With that authority given to men, also comes 
as they're supposed to. And sadly, that will get many of them. So lady, take comfort. Sisters, take comfort in the Word of God. Take comfort in who you are, how you're created. And just don't try to be like men. Please don't try to be like men. Enjoy being who God made you to be. May everybody have a blessed day.